This is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, September 15th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. As a founder, Trevor Milton was known for making bold statements and displaying a charisma that inspired employees and attracted investors. When it came to promoting his electric truck startup Nikola, he went on podcasts and news shows making big claims about its hydrogen trucks and the fueling stations that would support them. The company brought in a lot of funding, and when it went public in 2020, retail investors flocked to it, raising its valuation from $3.3 billion to $30 billion. But now, Milton is on trial accused of lying about Nikola's technological capabilities to enrich himself. He left the company in 2020. Milton faces two counts of wire fraud and two counts of securities fraud, with the possibility of 25 years in prison. He's pleaded not guilty. Beyond what it could mean for Milton and Nikola, the case could have ripple effects for other young pre-IPO companies looking to get investors excited about their future. Here to talk about the trial and those potential impacts is WSJ reporter Ben Foldy. Hi, Ben. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So prosecutors allege that Trevor Milton made these big promises and misled investors about the technology Nikola had developed. Can you tell us a bit more about what those allegations are and how they came about? Yeah, so the allegations came after a short seller, Hindenburg Research, and some whistleblowers put out a report alleging that Trevor Milton had made all kinds of misrepresentations about about the company. And one of the U.S. attorneys, when they first unveiled these charges, said Trevor Milton lied about basically every element of the business. And in their opening statements, the prosecutors said Mr. Milton had lied about the technology that the company had built, namely kind of this early prototype truck, which he had said you know was fully built, fully functional. And whistleblowers and prosecutors allege that, no, it wasn't, never drove anywhere under its own power and was rolled down a hill for a promotional video, that Mr. Milton misrepresented the production of the fuel. There were a couple times where he'd said, you know, Nikola was making hydrogen at $4 a kilogram, which not only was that kind of a unprecedentedly cheap price for producing hydrogen, but Nikola had not produced any hydrogen at any price at that point. They also kind of focused on representations Trevor Milton made about the quality and amount of the contracts and orders they had for the trucks in the future. And the last thing that they sound like they're going to focus on in this trial is a pickup truck called the Badger that was a big kind of motor for Nikola's big stock jump in June of 2020. But prosecutors allege barely existed beyond some very basic kind of preliminary steps towards it. What do we know about the defense's strategy? Yeah, so Tuesday was the first day that we really got a a look at it. There were a few arguments kind of running in parallel. One was that the government's case is based on distortion. And they said kind of distortion of context, distortion of the words, cherry picking of claims. They also made the argument that it's not enough to have misstatements. You have to have intent, essentially, and that Trevor had not intentionally deceived and misled. They also pointed the finger at other Nikola executives. According to them, Trevor was part of Nikola's promotion, was kind of pushed to go out there by Nikola executives and not stopped when he talked and, you know, made some of these representations. So there was kind of a, you know, why isn't everybody else at Nikola also being held accountable for this? And then there was also an element of questioning the motives of everybody who would be called to testify against Mr. Milton. We got a taste of that. One of the witnesses who, you know, acted as a whistleblower has a financial incentive under the SEC's whistleblower program and also participated in shorting the stock at one point. So it seems like, you know, the defense is keen to point out that people testifying against Milton have an interest in doing so. They took kind of an interesting tack at the end of their opening statement. Trevor Milton's lawyer compared Trevor Milton talking about Nikola as like a parent talking about a child and said, you know, if a parent looks at a five-year-old and says that kid is going to Harvard, nobody, nobody takes him seriously and thinks that that kid is actually going to Harvard at that moment and said that Trevor was kind of talking in the same way about this kind of product of his labor and kind of a vision for the future. Let's dive into one of those points you just mentioned. Trevor Milton, the founder and former leader of this company, is on trial. Why isn't the company itself part of this case? 
I think if the defense has their way, the company will be a part of this case, looking as to kind of who in the room was trying to stop Trevor. Nikola did settle with the SEC and had an investigation into these allegations and paid $125 million. So I think Nikola, the company, did kind of pay its pound of flesh, so to speak. But even the defense themselves kind of pointed out was that Nikola and all of its disclosures you know, these kind of reams and reams of financial documents would often kind of have a more hedged or careful or qualified version of some statement. And then Trevor would be the one on the podcast or on TV with the big boisterous claim. Let's talk a bit about the people who did buy the Nikola stock, because a lot of them were novice investors, very excited about this company. Is that expected to be an important part of this trial at all? I think for the prosecutors it is. They really are trying to paint this as kind of like this was a stock promotion scam, for lack of a better word, that was aimed at at retail investors. And one of the ways that they backed that up was by saying that, you know, Trevor Milton wasn't just, you know, on CNBC or just on earnings calls. He was tweeting. He was Instagram living. He was, you know, avowedly saying, I want to be the most open and accessible executive on on social media. And so... According to the prosecution, that was kind of part of this larger fraud to drive the stock price up by appealing to retail investors and Robin Hood traders and the like. Nicolo went public via a special purpose acquisition company, sometimes called a blank check company. A lot of other green vehicle companies went public kind of the same way around the same time with also big promises. Does the fallout from Nikola have any impact on them, on how investors or maybe regulators are looking at them? I think Nikola was kind of the first big SPAC success in the space and also the first big catastrophic blow up in the space and not the last of either of those. You know, when Nikola went public in June of 2020, it soared in its first week and was briefly worth more than Ford Motor Company without having any revenue to speak of. And that kind of showed a lot of companies, I think, that there was an easier and quicker way of going public pre-revenue in a lot of cases, and that the market had an appetite for those kinds of deals at that moment and really kind of drove valuations up for a while. So Nikola was the first of those to kind of come back to earth with these allegations that started coming out in June but didn't really get traction until September. And then in the time since, a lot of the other EV companies that have SPAC'd have disclosed SEC investigations or Department of Justice investigations. They've been hit by short sellers, you know, even the same short sellers in some cases. And the sector is really kind of, you know, it's not just one Icarus. It's been a bunch of Icari, I guess. Nikola was kind of the poster child, but the the whole sector has been kind of racked with these issues. All right. That's our reporter, Ben Foldy. Thanks so much for joining us, Ben. Thank you for having me. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.